In 2003, Matt Kenseth would win the Winston Cup Championship. In this title triumph, he would only win once, an occurrence that would be the final push to bring about the new chase format in 2004. A format that would split up the top 10 in points with 10 races remaining in the season from the rest of the field. Kenseth made the first two runnings of the chase, finishing 8th in 2004 and 7th in 2005. While not setting the NASCAR world on fire, he was still a solid driver and was looking to make a viable threat for the championship in 2006. It wouldn't start out too well, though, as Kenseth had run-ins with defending champion Tony Stewart in the 2006 Daytona 500. There's Tony Wow, man, that doesn't get more light than that. And look at this, up across the track. And a lot of guys with some heads-up driving. And a lot of cars miss this wreck. Oh, my goodness. Bobby Labonte getting by on the inside. We saw Mike Wallace go by on the outside. He was on the on camera on the big screens around the racetrack and said, move the camera. Now we're going to leave pit road. And NASCAR has NASCAR race control a moment ago told both these drivers, Matt Kenseth in the 17 and Tony Stewart in the 20, to settle down. Well, you know, Kenseth should be hot. He's got a race car that's probably not capable of winning the Daytona 500 now because of that. Black flag 17. Matt Kenseth will have to come to pit road. Kenseth would go on to finish 15th in the race. This would not, however, set the tone for his season. At Fontana, all of the Roush cars were dominant, led by Greg Biffle. But when Biffle's engine expired late in the race, it was Kenseth who would end up being the primary beneficiary. You're watching down here in turn three, though. He's going to take it hard to the outside. Tire cars racing up three wide in the middle of the pack as Matt Kenseth comes off turn number four. Ahead of Jimmy Johnson and Kenseth wins the Auto Club 500. After securing his first win of the season in 2006 at California, the Killer Bees and Kenseth look to be in line for two wins in a row. Leading late in Las Vegas, the 17 would need to hold off defending winner Jimmy Johnson. But Darrell's been turned two. That's where the strength has been with this 48 car. Kyle Busch poised to take advantage. It's a three-car race with a mile outside, to go. He's looking outside. You better block him if you want to hold him off. Got a good run. Kenseth pulls the block, going off into turn three. Johnson goes to the high side. He's he going to try to get that momentum. Jimmy Johnson. Drag race. Uh, last year like drag this. Race. Kenseth with the edge. Here comes Johnson. Jimmy's momentum got it. He's outside. Got it. He's got it. He's got it. 48. Kenseth led 146 of the 267 lap race, but he could not lead the final four seconds of the race. But Vegas wouldn't be the only race where Kenseth leading a good majority of the day would be overshadowed. Bush Five to, to, to go. And, and there. Hey, there he goes. Into 29. Kevin Harvick is going to go by him as well. It's not over. Oh, and then Look at this, the 24 just went around. Well, I think uh, that's how Jeff got by Matt. Bobby Labonte almost Ooh. involved in that one. How about old Carl Edwards? Jeff Gordon out of his car, and he's not happy with Matt Kenson. Boy, that's, out of, now, that's totally out of character. Kenseth's third place finish got him the points lead, one that he would swap with Jimmy Johnson for a lot of the season. But his consistency kept him in the top two in points, as between the fifth and twelfth races of the season, he finished lower than sixth only twice. But Jamie goes to the bottom, he tries to slide up and drop that. He's got to stay up high. Come on, Bob, tell him. Oh, he got loose off at two that time. Oh, side by side, three to go. McMurray got loose off of four. He can, he can get him back, though, because he's so good if he'll run that line right there. But Kenseth's going to clear him coming off turn two. Jamie wants to fight back, but Kenseth will go up in front of him. He gave it a foul, a foul, a And he'll sleep well tonight. Yes, he will. I, I finally turned the corner. He made a statement yes, today, getting that whole race team. Good job. Kenseth's car was just too good. 
Matt Kenseth can make it off turn three and four. He's going to chop into that point lead of Jimmy Johnson. That's a great, great, great job on the Matt's part. Way to go, Matt. Loose off four, but Matt Kenseth <laughs> wins. Kenseth prevailing for his second win of 2006 would lead into a rocky summer. After two of the next four finishes were outside the top 10, he looked to be having a bit of a redemption at the Chicagoland Speedway. In 2005, Kenseth had dominated the lone cup race at the track, only to be beaten out by a strategy gamble by Dale Earnhardt Jr. He would once again be locked in a battle, though, at the finish with another one of NASCAR's most popular drivers. This time, it would be Jeff Gordon. That crash cost him critical points, knocked him out of the top 10, but right now he's on the bumper of the leader. Oh! Kenseth goes around off the front end of Gordon. And automatically you think of what happened at Bristol between the 17 and the 24 that resulted in that shoving incident on pit road after the race. As for Kenseth, it only continued a summer slide that continued into August. This would be where Kenseth's season would pick back up. I don't think you're not the same outcome as <laughs> Chicago, though. We're by the end. This is a strong performance for Matt Kenseth and that Robbie Reiser-led team. Second in the championship standings right now, just 58 points behind Jimmy Johnson. Matt started working on cars when he was 13 along with his dad. Started racing at 16. Already has one next Nextel Cup championship, trying to get another, trying to make the chase for the championship. Matt Kenseth wins at Michigan. Good day, Rob. Good job, guys. Did a really good job there. Here he goes. Matt Kenseth wins the shopping 500. With those two wins and a 7th and 8th place duo, Kenseth would enter the 10-race reset with the points lead, 5 above Jimmy Johnson. With a 10th place finish in New Hampshire, he'd fall to 3rd in points. A 4th place finish for rookie sensation Denny Hamlin put him ahead of Kenseth, and he was 41 points behind the race winner and points leader, Kevin Harvick. The next race at Dover, Kenseth looked to sweep the 2006 Nextel Cup races at Dover. He would have to race both Jeff Burton and the rain. Lap after lap, Burton and Kenseth played a cat and mouse game, side by side, lap after lap again. Kenseth defending the race lead from a charging Burton until... About four laps ago, Matt Kenseth came on the radio and in a very exhausted voice said, how many laps left, how many laps left? As if to say, how much longer do I have to hold him behind me? There it is. No clear, longer. clear, clear. Away from this is down the back stretch. Burton is taking the lead. Kenseth running out of gas took any chance of him charging back for a win away. While Burton piloted his Orange 31 machine home to a win, the black and yellow 17 sputtered across in 10th, losing a large chunk of points and leaving the Delaware track 18 behind none other than Jeff Burton. The next week at Kansas, Kenseth found himself in an ill-performing car outside the top 20 almost all day. A polar opposite of how he ran at Chicagoland, the sister track of Kansas. Luckily for Kenseth, the points damage wasn't as bad as it could have been. While he finished 23rd a lap down, only four chasers finished inside the top 10. Unfortunately for Kenseth and eight other trailing chasers, Jeff Burton was the second highest of the 10, finishing 5th. Heading to Talladega, he sat fourth in the standings, now 84 markers behind. The goal at this point would be just to survive. While chasers like Jeff Gordon, Jimmy Johnson, and Dale Earnhardt Jr. were collected in different messes, it was Kenseth who managed to keep his nose clean. And in the final 10 laps, the championship window burst back open for his chances. Championship leader. Be ready, guys. Be ready. The way that car wiggles, he may have a tire flat. Marty, he came on the radio and said something's wrong. And he said, I think I've got a flat. Leaving Talladega, Kenseth's fourth place finish vaulted him up to second in points, only six behind Jeff Burton. Going to Lowe's, the championship was still wide open. The top five in points were less than 100 points apart. The top eight were within one race worth of points. At Lowe's, though, Kenseth's Carhartt Ford wasn't exactly perfect. It looked to be a repeat of his Kansas performance, at least the opening two-thirds of it. He ran in the 20s for much of the day, but he would be able to salvage a 14th place finish. Still behind Burton, but now 
45 back. The sixth race of the chase at Martinsville would be the turning point. Burton would come home 42nd after this race, and he wouldn't be a factor for the rest of the chase. And with an 11th place finish, Kenseth would assume a 36-point lead over Kevin Harvick. Heading to Atlanta with four races remaining, all 10 drivers were still in contention. Also, with qualifying rained out, it meant that Kenseth also started from the pole. Guys like Kyle Busch, Kevin Harvick, Mark Martin, and Casey Kane all had problems and ran poorly. While a non-chaser in Tony Stewart would run away with the win. Kenseth, meanwhile, would be locked in a fierce battle for third with fellow 2000 rookie Dale Earnhardt Jr. And last lap at Atlanta. Can Johnson get there? Can Kenseth get third from Earnhardt? And a car in the wall. The 07 car. Boyer trying to keep it high on the track. They've already taken the white flag. If the caution was to come out, the race would be over. Kenseth trying to make a move on the eight of Earnhardt. This is for third. Kenseth would leave the Hampton track with a 26-point lead over now Jimmy Johnson, a driver in the midst of a massive comeback. While entering the chase second, he quickly dropped like a rock after crashing and finishing 39th at New Hampshire. Then, middling runs at Dover and Kansas threw him back even more. And finally, at Talladega, he was crashed while making what would have been the race-winning pass and finishing 24th as a result, pushing him to a season-low 8th in the standings, 156 points back. But the next three races changed the narrative completely. Second at Lowe's, followed by a Martinsville win and a second at Atlanta, put him directly behind the 17. Kenseth needed a stellar run at Texas a run that would not come as he finished 12th, while once again, Jimmy Johnson finished second. Now once again, Kenseth trailed Johnson. With two races to go, it was a mere 17-point difference. Once again, though, Kenseth would stumble at the most crucial of moments, finishing 13th at Phoenix, while Johnson once again came home second. Heading to Homestead, five drivers would duel it out for the next L Cup. Leader Jimmy Johnson, Kenseth, who trailed by now 63 points, Kevin Harvick and Denny Hamlin, who were both 90 back, and the long shot of Dale Earnhardt Jr., who trailed by 115. At Miami, while they were in contention, Hamlin, Harvick, and Earnhardt weren't the main concern. Johnson and Kenseth were the main drivers duking it out. And while Kenseth did hold the points lead multiple times during the event, it wouldn't end out that way, as his sixth place finish was not enough to overcome Johnson's ninth. Jimmy Johnson would be the 2006 NASCAR Nextel Cup Series champion and would begin his reign of five consecutive seasons being the best in the sport. Kenseth would come home runner-up, only 56 points away from title number two. He won four times in 2006. From 2007 to 2010, while Johnson won four more championships, Kenseth would only win four more races and would have to wait until 2013 to be a championship contender again. Funny enough, against Jimmy Johnson. Looking back at how close he came to victory makes many wonder. What if he had won at Dover? What if he hadn't faltered at the mile-and-a-half tracks? What if... In 2006, Matt Kenseth captured his missing ring.